Usually we start off with a bit of a joke around here, but I thought, how about this time we make the whole thing a joke? So I'm just gonna overdub this entire non-metallic metal video and see how that goes. It's either gonna be really funny and people everywhere are gonna appreciate my greatness, or it's gonna be really annoying. Let's find out. Oh, this too. I am a heretic. For the actual video, we're breaking down four steps to non-metallic metal. If you haven't tried non-metallic metal before, this is probably going to be the best way to look at it because we're not worrying about smoothness, so we're not glazing. This video isn't for people that could already enter Golden Demon because hell, they can already do it. But before we get to the NNM, we're gonna have to start off with some robes and armor. So I'm gonna kick this off with a Xenothal. Gonna give us some instant detail, pick out all the highlights and leave the shadows dark. Yes, I'm using an airbrush, but a dry brush would do exactly the same thing. Now I'm gonna take three speed paints, Magic Blue, Gilly Dew, and Purple Swarm. This was heavily inspired by Ninjon's Tomb King video. We're gonna start off with that Purple Swarm on the bottom half, mixing into that Magic Blue and kind of creating the transition, and then just a little bit of that Gilly Blue on top, and wet blending wherever they meet. That's the armor done. There was not a lot of armor here. Now the robes, I'm also going to use the airbrush for this, but you can layer in. I'm just going to be aiming the magenta at probably some of the higher points on the robes and the folds. We really just want to make them pop. We already have the purple in the recesses, so the magenta going over top is really just going to give us some instant contrast. Then we're going to jump up into some brighter pink and pick out the highest parts of the folds. It's a simple idea, the higher it is, the lighter it is. And then we're going to grab that same magic blue and shoot it into the recesses. This is going to make it look a little bit glowy and just a little bit more interesting. With that same light pink, we're just going to pick out some of the harder edges and the folds just to kind of pop it. And that's the robes done. Now we can finally get into the non-metallic metal and we only need three paints. Rhinox Hide from Citadel, Scofulous Brown from Vallejo and Ice Yellow from the Army Painter Fanatics range. Now we're into step one and it's just a base coat. We all know how to do this and basically I'm just gonna take that Rhinox Hide and the Scrofulous Brown and make a really dark murky brown. Now I have thinned this down fairly substantially. It's closer to a thin layer consistency. Usually with base coats, you want a nice solid coat, but here we're actually gonna leave a lot of the greens and the blues, whatever part you're working on, you want some of that color left in the recesses because that's what's gonna make this interesting. One, because we're adding some extra color, but two, because it's gonna actually look like a little bit of reflection. Now we're into step two, which is layering, which is exactly the same as base coating, well, how we did it back there, except we're gonna cover even less. Now, with that same mix that we had of Rhinox Hide and Scrofulous Brown, I'm gonna add more Scrofulous Brown into this and start sketching in some of the highlights. So where the light would be probably the shiniest. We're starting to build a foundation for where we're gonna have our high spots and our low spots. Included in this step, we are gonna actually jump up to a pure Scrofulous Brown as well and do the exact same thing. What we wanna focus on here is trying to get that big pop of contrast. It's the small areas and the big jumps of color that really sell the shiny effect in non-metallic metal. A good way to gauge if you're on the right track here or not is, does this look rusty. That might feel strange, but you have to remember the difference between a rusted or a dull metal and a highly polished metal is how shiny it is. For placement here, we're really just looking for where light would be hitting in different places. Think about it as a highlight, except it's taking up more surface area. Step three, now we're actually into highlighting. For the highlights, I'm just taking Scrofulous Brown and Ice Yellow, and we're looking for the sharpest edges. This is where the light's going to hit, and this is actually what's going to give us our massive, massive jump in reflection. All the sticky outy bits, the corners, the ray surfaces, that's where we want this color to be. And we want to leave a lot of the Scrofulous Brown mix that we did in the last step, just so it actually has that contrast. I'm going to push that word, contrast. Contrast is the big seller here. From here, we're going straight to pure ice yellow and we are gonna pick out the tiniest little areas, little dots, little lines on the most pronounced edges and parts. This is where the reflection is really gonna to start to pop. The last step is black lining. Now, this might be a new idea, but essentially what we're doing is we're taking a black or a really dark color, in our case, it's Rhinox Hide, and we're gonna trace the recesses. We're painting in so we really, really define it. And that's what black lining does. It really defines and separates the parts. That definition is really gonna make the model and the details pop while still leaving the non-metallic metal feeling alone. The only other thing I wanna say from here is this is not a one-stop, one-pass, one-and-done. When miniature painters talk about refining, they're actually talking about going back a couple of steps and reapplying paint in different areas to get it where they want to. It's perfectly fine to go back and fix it. Now, the glory shots.
if you've never tried non-metallic metal before, this would probably be a pretty good place to start. Don't worry if it doesn't look like something from Golden Demon, just try and figure out if it looks shiny or not. Hit that like and subscribe, and as always, a massive thank you to all our Prismatic Patreon heretics. We'll see you next Tuesday.